What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we've got this 3D ball ball design. Now as always there's links to everything in the description down below so you can follow along with the same canvas size and colours. Now with this design I recommend potentially even following along with mine and trying to replicate this one on screen but otherwise have some fun with it and create your own patterns and designs and whatever you want to put inside the ball ball itself. It's all focused around the Christmas tree in the centre but have some fun maybe introducing some extra items. Now, if you didn't already know, I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel, but I also post three more exclusive tutorials every single month over on my Patreon. I've put the latest three on the screen now. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, there's a link in the description down below, and you can check out all the benefits you get when you become a patron. Now, with all that said, let's get started. So once you've got your canvas, the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is add a background. So we're going to go up to our colors and we're going to grab this red here in the top left of our palette. And we're going to go ahead and drag that onto the empty layer that we have to start with. We're then going to go up to our layers and create another new layer just so we can add some different colors in the background. So we're going to go ahead and continue with the same red, but we need to change the layer option from normal. And we're going to go ahead and change that to linear burn. And then we're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go ahead and go to airbrushing and the soft brush and we're going to make that quite large around about sort of 23 percent if not slightly bigger could probably go up to about 30 and all we want to do is just sort of transition in a little bit of this darker color here in the top right so it's just trying to create a bit more of a gradient here and if you've pressed a little bit too firm just simply then go up to your adjustments gaussian blur so like from left to right and that will nicely blend it out once you get up to a high enough percentage so tap on your cursor when you're done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just make mine a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna grab my cursor. I'm just gonna make this nice and big so it covers up the majority of that top right section. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in some light color in the bottom left. So we're gonna go up to our layers and create another new layer. We're gonna change this layer effect from normal and we're gonna change it to add. And we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab this orange here. It's the second color on the top row. And just like we did in the top right, but this time in the bottom left, we're going to just blend in some of that color. So we're just going to go ahead and go to our adjustments, Gaussian Blur again, so from left to right and just blend that out. And we should end up with a nice sort of transition of colors in the background. Now we've done that, we can go ahead and create our design. So we're going to go up to our layers and we're going to create a new layer at the top. We're going to continue just with any color for a moment because we're going to draw in a circle that will give us a nice guide. So if we go up to our brush library, Let's just go to calligraphy. Let's go to the monoline brush and keep in your size something nice that you can see it. So a good enough weight to it. We're just going to go ahead and draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. Hold your pen down and pop your finger on the screen to get a nice perfect circle. And we're going to want to make a circle roughly around about sort of this sort of size. And if we grab our cursor, we tap on it and then we use the option in the bottom left of snapping. We can position this nicely in the center of our design where we hit these two orange lines like so and then tap on your cursor when you're done now that is like i said just a guide so now we're going to go up to our layers and create another new layer we're going to go ahead and grab our actions we're going to go to canvas and we're going to add on a drawing guide so we're going to turn this on here and then we're going to edit the drawing guide because we're going to use the option of symmetry and to start with, we're just going to use the vertical option. So we're just going to make sure our option here is set to vertical and hit done. And now on this layer, we're going to go ahead and draw in our pattern. Now I want to start with the center point, which is going to be a Christmas tree design. And then we can draw in the rest of the design around it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my layers, making sure the layer now says assisted, which it does. The first step is to, of course, draw in the tree for me. So I'm going to go up to my colors and I'm going to grab the green, the third color on the top row. And the brush of choice for today's design is we're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go into inking and we're going to use the studio pen. Now I've got a size set here of 28%. Now let's just go up to my brush library for the studio pen and check out the stabilization that I have on. I have the streamline set all the way to max and the stabilization to about 31%. That'll give you some nice super smooth lines that you'll be able to draw in. So we're going to go ahead now and draw in the tree. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to start towards the center point. So I'm going to go ahead and press quite lightly and then get progressively firmer and draw a little dot on the end. That's going to give us the sort of silhouette of our tree eventually. 
And we're going to start here, we're going to do exactly the same. So nice and light to start with, adding in some good pressure and then rolling it round into a point. And if you need to, you can go over any of your lines multiple times if you need to thicken them up. And finally, we're going to do a third one down here, which is going to act as our tree. Now I'm going to grab my cursor and just move that a little bit higher up, just so I can give some space here at the bottom. And I might make that a little bit smaller. So this is all down to personal preference. Tapping on my cursor when I'm done. And then for the bottom of the tree, we're going to create some really nice little sort of wave lines like so. And we're going to kind of follow this pattern all the way around our design. So we're going to create sort of the stump at the bottom of the tree. So I'm going to create another little sort of little note design almost. And then we're going to fill in the center of the tree as well with different patterns. So we can create some nice swooping lines like so. And we can do that all the way up and down the tree just to flush it out a little bit. That will add some extra definition in there and then just add whatever patterns you like. So we could start off with a larger dot. We can make a slightly smaller one and then we can go even smaller again. So there's three there and try to sort of create a bit of a pattern. So maybe up here I'll create a, a dot followed by another dot and then a progressively smaller one. If up here there's no space, try to adjust it just to, to actually fit it in. And in this space down here, you can create again any pattern you like. So maybe we just create another rounded little swoop like so. Again, let's maybe try and fit in some dots so it fits the rest of the pattern. Maybe a little something like this. And then just continue to flush it out with whatever things you think will look really cool. You can go ahead and create the same sort of styling all the way up the tree. And I think that looks pretty good to me. We could maybe make the additions of adding in some nice bouncing lines along these edges. So I've done four there and I'll try and to make that consistent across all of them. We'll do the same up on the top one. And there we go, we've got a nice little pattern going on in there. And then take a look at your gaps and just see what you can place in these areas. For example, here there's a nice big space. So maybe I could go ahead and just draw in a circle and then make that consistent with the rest of the design. So just draw in a circle at that point throughout the pattern up and down. But try to fill it out with whatever design you like the look of. Once you're happy with your tree though, we can move on to the next color, which will be this yellow here, the fourth color on that top row. Now for this, I'm going to go ahead and change my brush. I'm going to change it to calligraphy and the monoline brush. I'm going to make the brush size around about 4% and we're just going to sort of draw in some shapes here. So straight lines. So I'm going to draw in the bottom of the star first, followed by the side profile of that point out to another point. Now you want to obviously make all your points quite consistent. So you don't want to stretch that one out too far. Drawing in another straight line towards the middle and then another straight line up towards that center point like so then drag and drop your color into that space and you've got a little star on top of your tree so now we have our tree we're going to go ahead and add in the frame that runs around it now to do this we're going to go ahead and change our color first of all to red we're going to continue with the studio pen that we were using before but before we get started we need to change our drawing guide so we're going to go to actions and we're going to edit the drawing guide we're going to go to options down here we're going to use the option of quadrant that will allow us to draw in one of the four quadrants and it will draw it in all of them. So what we can do is we can go ahead and nicely now start to fill out our design with some nice large shapes towards the outside to just create a border and a frame. So we're going to go ahead and just draw in some big twirls and curls again, something a little bit like this. You can then sort of move into maybe this space down here. So I'm going to create something a little bit smaller in this area because I've got a little bit of a plan for this space. So we can create like a little sort of shape like this. And then we're going to go ahead and create a big twirl that just runs into this space and nicely fills that gap. And then likewise, we're going to create one more here, just creating a big twirl and a curl and filling in that gap. Now, if you take a look at your design, you've now got this nice big frame around the outside that we can start to add some different elements into, such as repeating items. So we can go ahead and in this space here, maybe create another little sort of flick and a curl, maybe even a dot right on the line there. And again, that's gonna be reflected on the opposite side. In this gap here, there's not really much space to add anything in, so we'll add in another dot. So we're just starting to create a bit more of a pattern. And then in here, we're gonna create a dot, 
and then a couple of smaller ones. Again, as I mentioned in the intro, you can add in whatever style you like, whatever pattern you like. Pretty much once you've got this sort of border down, you can start to go ahead and create your own pattern and your own styles and whatever sort of shapes you want to add into the design. I'm going to create some more dots here that just run under each one of the twelves. And again, it's nicely being repeated in each area. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is in this space town here, I'm going to go ahead and create a little candy cane. So we're going to go ahead and go to our brush. We're going to change our brush to calligraphy and the monoline brush. Let's make the size roughly around about sort of 50 percent. And we're going to go ahead and draw in a line. And then followed by a curl at the top. Once you've drawn that in, we can then go ahead and go to our eraser. Tap on the eraser and make sure you're using the monoline brush as well under calligraphy. Make your eraser size a bit smaller, maybe around about sort of 25%. And just chop away some lines into your candy cane there. And then you should end up with a nice little cane there, filling in that space nicely. We've then got some more space in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our layers and create a new layer. Just for a second, we're going to go up to our actions and edit our drawing guide and change the option back to vertical. Because I want to create one shape, first of all, uh, just to fill in that space a little bit easier with the vertical drawing guide. So hit done. We're going to go ahead and change our color to white. We're going to go make sure our brush is still the monoline brush, which it should be. And the size doesn't really matter, but about 30% for me. And we're going to go to this empty layer, tap on it and make sure it is using the new drawing assist of the vertical. So I'm just going to go up into this top space here as an idea, as a guide for you. We're going to create sort of a rounded rectangle shape up here. So just creating a nice rounded rectangle, filling in the gaps, drag and dropping the color in. And then from there, I'm actually going to make my brush size a little bit smaller just and get some nice smaller bows, so about 16%. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my brush size a little bit smaller, about sort of 12%, but I'm also going to go to the brush and the monoline. I'm going to go to my stabilization, turn the streamline all the way up, and I'm going to put the stabilization back to what I normally have around about sort of 32%. This will allow us to create some really nice smooth shapes. So I can now go ahead and create a nice little bow that just sits beside it. So you're kind of creating like a B and then joining up the lines. Dragging and dropping the color in. You can maybe grab your eraser and just tune those shapes a little bit more if you need to like I do and I'm also going to just tune the inside a little bit more just make sure it matches up to the center of our bow and then I'm going to grab my brush again and I'm going to create a little curve with some points at the bottom joining up towards the middle and then just link them up across the top so dragging and dropping the color in yet again zoom out because it's going to be a lot smaller than the size that it is right now I'm going to go ahead and grab my cursor Using the uniform option, scale that right down in size. I'm going to position it in this space here. So on that horizontal sort of line there, I'm going to move it into that space there, hit in that orange line. Then I'm going to go to the layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab my cursor and just sort of guesstimate best I can off to the right that it's almost in the same spot. Then go to the layers and pinch the two of them together and go back to your cursor. And you'll be able to tell when you're smack bang in the center, you'll hit that orange line there we go. And I want the horizontal and vertical orange line to let me know I'm nice and centered. Then I can go to my layer and pinch that layer down. We can then on that layer go back to filling in all the gaps. So I'm going to go to my colors again. I'm going to grab the red top left. I'm going to go to my brush library. I'm going to go back to inking and the studio pen and we're going to start drawing in. Now we will adjust some other colors of different shapes at the end of filling in this space. For now, we're just going to do exactly that and just fill in the space for a second, adding in some nice fun repeating patterns. So I'm just going to create some nice swells in this space here. So it's kind of like S shapes, little twirls in there. I'm going to create another little spiral twirl in there too. And I might introduce another one into this space as well. So that one was a little bit thin on that end, but it's now nicely repeating in that space. Looking down here, there's a little bit of space we can maybe add in something small. I'm just going to create a little heart that just sits in there. Join that up on that center line and make sure they join. So we can drag and drop the color into that space. 
in here we've got some very small areas here so i'm just going to create some little swells in there maybe a tiny one underneath it you don't want your details to be too small but just enough of them i'm going to maybe put a dot in there too and another dot here at the bottom so looking at the bottom we've got a heart we don't want to have an upside down heart up there so maybe we introduce a proper heart that just sits at the top there and again that's a little bit better and just create a little bit of a point at the bottom i'm going to create a little sort of swirl and curl into here and again i'm going to go ahead and work around that cane a little bit more so i'm just going to create a nice long swooping curve some more of these lovely S shapes almost. That's gonna fill out that top space. You can see that on the opposite side there. And then from there, we can go ahead and add in some more twirls and curls, some dots and spots, whatever you wanna fill in your space with. So here, for example, I'm gonna create another little twirl and I'll maybe create a nice little sort of couple of dashes here just to fill in that space. Let's do the same up here. So maybe create another little twirl into here, followed by some repeating dots on the way up. And taking a look at that, we've also got some quite nice coverage in there. We've got a few little gaps here and there, and this is the time to go ahead and fill those gaps in. So I've added in some twirls and curls in there too. Let's maybe add in a dot here, a dot here. So at this point, I'm kind of just looking for any gaps and just taking a look at the final design. That's kind of what I'm gonna roll with now for the rest of the design. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is add in the top here of the ball ball. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our colors. I'm gonna grab the gold because I know it'll be that color in the end. So the second color on that top row, go to your brush library. I'm gonna go back to calligraphy and the monoline brush. I'm gonna grab the monoline, which for me is here. And we're going to go ahead and just create the top area of the ball ball. So I'm going to go ahead and come straight down the middle line here to a point. So that's kind of the tie. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw in a straight line sort of on the side. And then create a curve arc from side to side. And then again across the bottom too. Now it's up to you. You can fill that in. You can leave it as is. The only thing I'm going to do is maybe just thicken up that bit of string at the top a little bit more. I'm just going to come down it, up and down it once or twice, just to thicken that space out. And in fact, I will do that. I will drag and drop the color into that top area just to bulk it out. So there we go. We've got our design. Now, the only thing we want to go ahead and do is tap on the layer now and alpha lock it and just adjust some shapes here and there where you want to change the red to say white. So the layers alpha lock now, which means you can't paint outside of this design that you've drawn. We can then go ahead and for example, I've got the gold selected right now. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some dots with gold. So we're using the monoline brush and making the size a bit bigger. I'm just gonna fill in some dots here and there. Some dots that I think will look cool. It will break up the design when we make it 3D in a second. So I'm just gonna fill in pretty much all the dots, I think. That one will look quite cool. So just try and pick like an element that you've made in your design, if you've not used dots, and fill them in with a different color. I'm going to go ahead and fill in these dots here with the yellow. There's a dot down here. There's a dot here. And this again will nicely break up your design a little bit more. There's another dot there. We've got some more dots up here. Now there's some more here. And I think that's my lot. It is. So then I'm going to go ahead and go to my colors and grab the white. Now of course the candy cane can be nicely broken up from just solid red. So I'm going to go to the white. And I'm going to fill in every other gap. So I'm going to make my brush size a bit smaller. I'm going to fill in this gap here, this gap here, and that one there. And then again at the top, kind of reflect that again. So filling in this one, filling in this one, filling in this one. And take a look and see if there's any other elements you maybe want to change the color of. See if there's any little lines here and there, anything that you think might look nice. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this one here on the outside. I'm going to change the color of this one here above it as well. Again, that'll be reflected nicely. And I think I'll just change the color of this one down here at the bottom, which will of course reflect at the top and the dot inside it to white so that we can just have some nice sort of points on either end. So I'm going to go ahead and just color that in at the top here as well. So we're just trying to break up our design, see what we've drawn in and see what we can adjust. 
I'm really happy with how that looks now. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which is making it 3D. So we're gonna to go to the layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, go to your colors, double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black and go back to the layer, tap on it and fill it. Then what we're gonna do is go to our cursor and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap twice in the bottom left hand corner. So one, two, that will have nudged your design two pixels down to the bottom left. Then we're gonna to go to our layers, swipe that layer to the left and duplicate it. And then this next layer, we're gonna to go to our cursor, tap twice in the bottom left, one, two. And we're gonna keep repeating this until we have a nice 3D side to our design. So one, two. And by doing this, we're constantly creating lots of layers that are gonna make the design 3D. So I'm gonna go back, one, two, duplicate again. Go back to the cursor and tap twice again. One, two, and keep going until I'm happy with the size. So going again, we've currently got six of the black layers. I'm gonna to go to a seventh now for sure. So one, two, and I think we'll go up to something around about nine or 10. So we're gonna go again, duplicate the layer, grab your cursor, one, two, go up to your layers, swipe again, duplicate it, grab your cursor and tap one, two. Now I'm actually happy with the distance between that. That's going to give a nice 3D side to everything. So we're going to go to our layers. I'm going to pinch all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of the black layers together onto one. And that's going to act as our side profile. Next, what we're going to go ahead and do is add in some different lighting effects. So we're going to go ahead and start on the side profile. First of all, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to tap on this layer and clipping mask it to the side profile. So the black one here. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab the red first of all. So the first color in that top row. We're gonna to go to our layers. We're gonna to go to the black layer for the side profile, tap on it and use the option of select. This is important to make sure color fill is grayed out and not turned on. We're then gonna go ahead and invert the selection to have selected everything but those shapes. Go back to the layer and the empty one above that we clipped, tap on it and use the option of fill. And once you do that, everything around the outside of the design on the side profile anyway, will be filled in with red. We're then gonna to go to our adjustments and go to motion blur. And we're gonna drag sort of from the center point down towards the bottom right. And this will start to bring in a little bit of color on the side profile of the area here. So again, I'm gonna go from the center point almost and drag down towards the bottom right. And I'm going to add in something around about this sort of size, around about sort of 44%. So I went from there to there, creating a 44% motion blur. Then I'm going to go back to the layer. I'm going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. I'm going to tap on the layer and alpha lock it for a second. I'm going to go to my colors and grab the gold. So the second color on that top row. Go back to the layer, tap on it and fill it. And then I'm going to change the layer effect from normal. I'm going to scroll down to add. Now this will give the side profile of our sort of 3D ball ball a nice lighting, which is kind of reflecting the light source down here that we made at the very beginning. Now, one thing we can also do now is go to our layers and the circle that we made as a guide, we can either turn it off or just delete it. We're now gonna go ahead and move up to the top of our ball ball. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer above that. We're gonna go ahead and tap on this layer and clipping mask it. And we're gonna kind of repeat the steps that we did before. So we're gonna go to our colors and grab the red. We're gonna go back to our layers. We're gonna to go to the ball ball and we're gonna tap on it and we're gonna use the option of select. We're gonna make sure that we invert the selection, go back to the layer and the empty layer that's above, tap on it and use the option of fill. Now you won't see too much of a visual change, but again, we've filled in everything but the ball ball. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our adjustments. We're gonna to go to Gaussian blur and we're gonna swipe from left to right until we bring in a little bit of color off the sides. So a good example is if you draw in, look in on some of the items that you've got here that are not red, you'll see that as I go from left to right, we're bringing in a little bit of that red off of the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that around about 6% and then tap on my adjustments when I'm done. That's gonna sort of add in a bit of a sort of chamfer look to it. But what we're also gonna do is just go to our layer again, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. We're gonna go ahead and then tap on the top one. We're gonna alpha lock it and we're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the gold again. So this gold here on the top row, second color. Go back to your layer, 
Tap on it and fill it now with the gold. Change the layer effect from normal and change it to add. And next what we're going to do is just make our bauble look a little bit more sort of glossy. So we're going to go to our layers and create another new layer. We're going to tap on that layer and clipping mask it. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab white in the top left of the palette. So double tap in the top left. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to switch it out to airbrushing and the soft brush. The brush size is set to 20% and the opacity is just momentarily set to 50 so we can build up some color. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of in this area here, just very lightly in a circle, just sort of draw in a nice sort of lighting area here. And then towards the very bottom left edge, just add in a light bit of white towards that bottom left. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our layer. We're going to tap on the end and we're going to change it down to lighten. And then we're going to create another new layer for our shadows. So we're going to create a new layer, tap on that layer and clipping mask it also. Go to your colors and double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. And you kind of want to run in a semicircle just sort of through this point here. So you can see where that's kind of run through there. And the tiniest bit on towards that top right edge. Then go to your layer. We're going to go ahead and tap on the layer option from normal. And we're going to scroll down until we hit overlay. Now you may want to adjust potentially the sliders of opacity just to adjust it for your own design. But you should end up with something like this where we've got a nice sort of darker side towards the bottom and a light sort of area up here kind of looking like it's a bit glossy and you can go back to your layers if you want to say the white one there grab white again and maybe just fill that out just adding in a sort of slightly bigger lighting area up there just to kind of show a little bit more lighting coming from that top edge and again mess with the sliders how you wish and if i go ahead and go to my actions turn off my drawing guide tap with four fingers to go full screen we end up with today's finished design so i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial as always be sure to drop a like down below and as always hit the subscribe button but please come and share your designs with me over on instagram i look forward to seeing what patterns you came up with for your own designs and i also post three more exclusive tutorials every single month but for patreon supporters there's a link in the description down below where you'll be able to see every tutorial that you unlock when you become a patreon supporter you can have your name featured in videos early access to videos, sneak peeks, and much, much more. So hit the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.